I want to help you succeed as a screenwriter, but I'm probably going to be stepping on your toes today, maybe stomping on them. So if you don't have on your big boy or big girl pants, you should probably stop watching right now. You're still here. That's good because tip number one impacts your longevity as a screenwriter and whether or not you're going to find success. Tip number one, approach the craft with vats of humility, not buckets, not barrels, vats. You're going to need a lot of humility. And to be clear, humility doesn't mean that you are groveling or putting yourself lower than you actually are. Humility means you are accurately viewing your own status and skills and abilities. It means you aren't thinking that you're better than you are. It means you aren't thinking you've got more talent than you actually do. It means you aren't interested in putting others down to make yourself look better. It does mean that you are willing to listen to others, that you're willing to work with others, that you're willing to admit when you're wrong, you're willing to accept your failures and learn from them, you're willing to help others who are behind you on the journey to screenwriting mastery, and you're willing to recognize there are others who are farther along than you. No one, and I mean no one in Hollywood, likes working with someone who acts like they are better than everyone else. It is better for you to take the lowest seat of honor at the table and be invited to sit at the best seat of honor than to sit in the best seat and be asked to move to a lower seat or to leave altogether, which is usually what happens to new writers. They're just asked to leave when they get this one wrong. You are not the exception to this rule. And if you think you are, then you aren't being humble. Have an accurate view of your skills and abilities or You'll never find success because you will never be willing to learn or listen to others who can help you. Approach every book you read, every movie you watch, every script you read, every script you write with an attitude of humility. What can you learn? You can learn a lot from the bad just as much as you can from the good, but are you willing to learn? Or do you think you have it all figured out? If you think you've got it all figured out, congratulations, but I'll never get to celebrate with you when you win that award because you'll mistreat so many people along the way that no one will ever work with you ever again. If you want a career as a screenwriter, humility has to be part of your DNA, not just a coat you put on when you go out to interact with people. You gotta learn it, integrate it, and embrace it. Number two, develop good habits. Ask any professional screenwriter what is the one trait they had to master before they became a professional screenwriter, and most, if not all, will tell you, self-discipline. The problem is a lot of new writers think all they have to do is just cultivate a spirit of discipline when it comes to writing, but that doesn't cultivate a habit that cultivates an event. Screenwriting, like any craft, impacts your whole life. And if you need a spirit of self-discipline in your writing, chances are you need it in other aspects of your life too. Do you complete your chores on time? Or do you wait until you have no clean clothes left to wear before you finally break down and do laundry? Do you clean the bathroom regularly or just wait till you can't stand it anymore? Do you do the dishes regularly or do you wait until you have no clean plates left and you're eating dinner off of a cookie sheet because that's the only flat thing you've got left that's clean? And it's not just chores. Are you regularly late? Or are you on time for meetings or work or calls or whatever? Are you taking care of yourself or do you just not have time for eating healthy or exercising or brushing your teeth or getting dressed for the day. And good habits don't just concern you. Do you open the door for other people? Do you let others go first? Do you wait your turn or do you bully your way to the front? Are you polite? Do you use your manners and say thank you and please? Or are you rude and inconsiderate? Because all of those are habits you have to cultivate. And if you can begin to cultivate good habits in every part of your life, Cultivating habits related to writing will be easy. But if you are careless or reckless or insensitive to others with the rest of your life, you're going to have trouble being disciplined when it comes to writing because you will not have cultivated the habits and practices associated with being self-disciplined. So stop sabotaging yourself. If you are not living a self-disciplined life, it's time to do so. And even if you don't want to be a professional screenwriter, being self-disciplined will spill into all other things in your life that you want to do. And it's going to make you more successful in whatever you're wanting to do. So spend time developing good habits. You'll have a better chance at finding success as a screenwriter if you do. Number three, different is better than good, but different and good are the best. Let's say a reader has two scripts and all things being equal, the execution of the stories within those scripts are really on the same level. But the reader has a directive and they can only pass on one script. 
a hundred percent of the time they're going to recommend the story that is different but if the reader has one script that's different and another that's good unless the one that's good is just fantastically awesome guess which one gets passed on yep the one that's different if the reader has two scripts and they're different and unique in their own right now the one that is also good that's the one that gets recommended. Don't mishear me, okay? This doesn't mean you just go out and start breaking all the conventions of screenwriting so your script looks different just to stand out. There is a fine line between different and reckless, okay? A reckless script implies the writer doesn't know what they're doing and the reader doesn't feel they are in the hands of a master storyteller. But a story that's a bit different lets the reader feel like they are in good hands. And because the story feels different than other things that they've been reading, they love this. So no, you don't have permission to go and write whatever you want, thinking it's just gonna be the next best thing since sliced bread. Okay, remember tip number one about being humble. You can't write whatever you want and expect people to spark to it. Because, and this is critically important, Hollywood isn't looking for new stories. They're looking for familiar stories that feel new. So you can't just go so far out in the woods that the reader wonders if they're even still in the woods. The story has to be familiar on some level, but at the same time, it has to be different. And unfortunately, this is one of those things that's kind of like a sixth sense. It gets honed and developed over time and with practice. So the more you practice coming up with story ideas, the better you'll get at it. But this is the trap because a lot of advice is people telling you, a new writer or a aspiring screenwriter, just go write a script. So you get so focused on writing the one good script, but you haven't come up with a bunch of ideas. You haven't learned to exercise that muscle. So have you come up with 50 good and different ideas? And not I'm not just saying 50 ideas. I'm saying 50 ideas that are good and different, which might mean that you have to come up with a thousand ideas. I mean, do you know how to do that? If not, you won't have any longevity as a screenwriter. Anyone can come up with an idea, but being able to come up with an idea that is both different and good on a regular basis, that's a rare thing. So you have to learn to do that and you will immediately stand out from the crowd. Number four, don't suck or settle. Yes, you're being humble. Yes, you've cultivated good habits. And yes, you have a good and different idea, but you still have to execute the story. You still have to craft a solid story and then tell it well. It can't suck. And your scenes and dialogue can't feel like you're settling or like you just figured it out in the car on the way home from the grocery store. And here's the ugly truth that most writers wanting to break into the industry never quite grasp. Novices play professionals plan. Every professional writer takes time to plan their story. And don't start going Stephen King or Aaron Sorkin. They've been writing stories for so long and they know stories so inherently and intricately well that they breathe stories and do what they should be doing in the execution without even thinking about it specifically. Much like you are breathing without thinking about it. So yeah, once you have their level of success and you've integrated story and storytelling into your being so much that you can breathe it without thinking about it, okay, fine, you won't need to plan as much. But if you aren't there, and chances are you're not, uh, you gotta plan. Novices play, professionals plan. Some plan a little, some plan a lot, but all of them plan. But novices are all like, well, I'll just figure it out as I go. Well, unfortunately, you'll never be able to land a writing assignment, which is where most professional screenwriters earn a living if you can't plan. The studio or the production company, guess what? They're gonna want notes and treatments and outlines and a pitch and something to show that you've planned and thought out the story. And if you don't know how to do that, you're handicapping yourself. But I hear the immediate retort, but I'm just learning. I don't need to know how to do that stuff yet. Um, why are you not learning how to do something that you are eventually gonna have to know how to do? And it's something, by the way, that makes the writing easier and fa helps you learn faster? I mean, why would you not wanna take the time to learn this skill? Well, it's hard work. Yeah, it's hard. Suck it up, buttercup. Your stories and your storytelling can't suck. You can't settle. You have to be working to constantly improve. And until you are getting calls every week to come and write on a script, you should be pursuing excellence at every opportunity. Now, if you're gonna just be a hobbyist, 
that's fine. Don't plan, who cares, have fun, do it however you want. But if you wanna make a go of this, if you wanna sell a screenplay and have a shot at a career, you have to learn how to plan your stories. You have to know how stories work. You have to know what tools you have at your disposal. There's a lot of resources out there that can help you with that. I've got some below if you want my help in this area. They're linked below. But you still have to learn how to plan. And then you have to execute the actual writing of the story. It can't suck. I mean, it'll suck less if you plan. It'll suck even less if you focus on learning the craft. And you can never approach screenwriting with a Meh, that's good enough. No, good enough is never good enough in screenwriting. You cannot settle. If you don't know, learn. If you need to get better, practice. There's no metal or residual check for second place. But if you really wanna make sure your stories are connecting with others, you have to do this last tip. Number five, tell stories that challenge people to do better. Telling entertaining stories is perfectly fine but telling entertaining stories that are actually about something is so much better and more memorable and meaningful to your audience. There has to be a reason that you care about the story. Otherwise, why are you taking the time to tell it? If it's not a story that matters to you, why should it matter to anyone else? Yeah, it shouldn't. And if you step back and think about it, the stories that you love are stories you connected with on a personal level. They were about something that mattered to you. What this means specifically? Well, you have to live life. You can't just sit behind your computer screen. You have to get out and experience life and relationships and community and heartache and love and joy and despair and the full range of human emotions. Life is short. It's temporary. It's a vapor. You're here one moment, gone the next. So while you're here, do something that matters. Make a difference in the lives of others. And here's a truth you have to understand. Telling stories to others is an act of benevolence. We tell stories so others will listen. If nobody's listening, why tell the story in the first place? If you're gonna take the time to tell a story, tell one that challenges people to do better, to aspire to more, to encourage them, to point out injustice or evil in our world, to strive for something more, to not settle. This is what leaves a memorable impression on the people who read your scripts. And make no mistake, you are writing scripts to be read, not shot. So you wanna make an impact on the reader. And if you can find a way to challenge the reader to do better, to inspire them, to encourage them, to motivate them to write some injustice in the world because of your story, you are now not just another screenwriter. You're a screenwriter who knows how to tell stories that matter. But these five things alone won't get you there. There are skills that you have to master and hone if you want to find success as a screenwriter. And you can learn more about those by watching this video right here. So don't forget about the fun buttons and links below if you'd like my help on your own story and storytelling endeavors. And when you tell a story, tell a story that matters. See you later.